Dear colleagues, chers collègues, Zoumala il Azza, Ouvajamei collègue, Estimados collègues, Bentin da Goe Tongshi, The 24th meeting of Mine Action National Directors and United Nations Advisors, or the NDMUN, is going to look different this year. Du fait de la situation sanitaire globale, nous avons décidé d'organiser ce meeting entièrement en ligne. هذا يعني أنه أينما كنتم في العالم يمكنكم الانضمام إلينا في الفترة من 25 إلى 27 مايو 2021. чтобы обсудить упорство, партнерство и прогресс противоминной деятельности в этом году. No olvide registrarse utilizando el enlace en la descripción del video y esté atento a más información pronto. 我们衷心的期待在第二十四届排雷行动国家级主任与联合顾问大会上与您相见，深化彼此间的合作。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this 24th edition of the International Meeting of National Directors and UN Advisors for Mine Action. My name is Bruno Donat. I am the chief of the UNMAS Geneva office. Welcome. And this is, if you are logging in, we are on the Hopin platform and you are part of the opening ceremony. So part of the opening ceremony, there will be an informal part now for about 10, 15 minutes to make sure you hear me, you see me. We will do a few tests. We will test languages and to familiarize yourself with this environment. As you know, we had, uh, with thanks to the government of Germany, had a nice platform now. Uh, it used to be in Geneva um, physical in the Palais des Nations, and now we have a fully online program. So let's go first check languages. Uh, as we speak live, we are doing some tests with a combination of the six official languages of the United Nations. Um, you should be hearing me, but let's do a quick test and then we will show if you are confused where to go, we will go slowly to say where to go. In addition, we may have an issue with sign language, which was to which may be on. We have the um, interpreters for sign language here. We have the technicians, but there is a, a delay which may cause some issues. So as we decide, let me go on. The show has to go on. So many people have signed. And more than 900 participants are registered online. And if someone, when we reach the 1,000 mark, let me know. So... Let's see first if Kayla, my colleague, you can uh, um, show us how to use Interprefy, please. Hello, hello, and thank you very much, Bruno. I'm going to share my screen so that you can see how to access interpretation. Right now, all of you are looking at the tab on the left that says plenary and you will see my face and Bruno's face. On the right-hand side of your screen, underneath the word plenary, you will see three options, chat, polls, and translations. To access simultaneous interpretation, click on translations. Then you should see an option to select one of the six official languages of the UN. Select your language of choice, and the interpretation will start automatically. Make sure that you also mute the original feed so that you don't hear two voices at once. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you, Kayla. Um, I heard sometimes uh, some people may need to have an additional device uh, is it possible to have two devices, either on an app, be it Interprefy or Hopin? Is there a way to know of that? Yes, for sure, Bruno. If it's easier for you 
and you don't want to access Interprefy from Hopin on your browser, you can also use the app Interprefy and um, insert a code that I will put into the chat right now. Excellent. So if participants, they should be able to see in the chat something to click on to have the Interprefy app. That is very helpful. Let me do a little test, not too long, to make sure we all hear and, and see each other very well. Uh, can we do a test? Uh, I would like to hear from my colleague Evezi in French, if possible. Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Evezi Otorimo. Pour écouter l'interprétation simultanée, vous pouvez accéder à Interprefy. Thank you, Evezi. I heard you okay. Um, my colleague, uh, Sarah, can you speak in Arabic, please? Marhaban bil jamia. Ismi Sarah Kamou. Wa yumkinukum al-husul wa al-istima ala tarham al-mutazamina ala Interprefy. Excellent. Uh, if anybody is in, 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 in where I am, social distance, do you hear the interpretation in English? I just want to hear. I'm checking with other languages. I, I would like to get a thumbs up if somebody hears in English. Thank you. Uh, Yue in Chinese, please. Interprefy平台. Thank you, Kayla. So, Kayla, I know you are here, but I don't know whether you're going to speak live or we will run the video of before. Um, I think here. Can you speak a few words of Russian, Kayla, please? Да, конечно. Здравствуйте и добро пожаловать в NDM UN. Thank you so much. Our colleague from New York. Um, Belen, please, can you say a few words in Spanish, please? Bienvenidos a todos. Mi nombre es Belen Papola. Para escuchar interpretación simultánea, puedes acceder a Interprefy. Excellent. I think we are okay in terms of language. Should there be an issue, we will take care of it. Um, if, uh, as we welcome those who are, of you who are on board just now, I see more people are joining from many places in the world. Welcome to you all. We are uh, being broadcast live in the opening ceremony, and this is the informal part to make sure everybody's comfortable. We will go to the real uh, official ceremony soon in a few minutes, about six minutes, uh, to be chaired by acting director of UNMAS, um, Madame Eileen Cohn. Before that, um, let's go around this platform. I'm very new to hopping, I'm used to other ones. Um, Kayla, is it possible for you to give us, I'm new to this platform, show us, according to you, I'm a newcomer, what are maybe four or five key points that I should know from hopping? And if you can go a bit slowly for interpretation, please. Yes, absolutely, Bruno. I will share my screen again. When you first entered into the Hopin platform, you will land on a page like this. You can re-enter this page anytime by clicking reception on the left-hand side of your screen. This is important because if you scroll down, you can see what is live right now, and you can see the full agenda with all of the events, all of the speakers, and even the option to add it directly to your calendar. In order to watch all of the plenary sessions as you are right now, click on plenary, the second option on the left, as you probably all already have. There you will be able to watch all of the plenary sessions live. You can also ask any questions that you may have on the chat by clicking on chat under plenary. And it's great to see so many people saying hello and letting us know what's going on with the translation. So thank you very much to everybody. 
To watch all the side events later today and over the next few days, click on side event on the left-hand side of your screen. There, you will be able to see the options for all of the side events several minutes before they are about to occur. These are the three main sections that you should know about on Hopin. Thank you, Bruno. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, Kayla. So I, I have a few more questions. Please don't leave me alone in this system. Um, I saw some circles. Some people have pictures, some have letters. Uh, I think you said it's a profile. How do I change? I'm new here and welcome to all of you joining from across the world. Uh, we are part of the opening ceremony. We are on the pre-opening ceremony where we are testing and making sure people are comfortable as if we were in a real conference center. So how do I change my profile? Yeah, of course. In order to change your profile, at any point in the event, go to the top right-hand corner of your screen where you'll see a little circle that is your profile icon. Click the down arrow next to it and you will see the option to edit profile. From there, we recommend that you add a photo to represent yourself and add the name of your organization before your first name so that your colleagues can find you more easily. Uh, thank, uh, you. thank you. Can you, you go, go back, back to that screen, screen where you put the name, name of the organization? organization? So you're saying for, for somebody like me, my name is Bruno. So I put Unmas, Bruno, first name, and then last name, Donut. Then they will be able, I'll be, they will be able to put, pick me up and put a picture so people can recognize me when, that's good. That's very good. Thank you so much. Um, now, imagine I see all those circles. Um, how do I meet those people? Because we are trying to recreate as if we were face to face, but we are not. How, how do I meet participants? For sure, there's two ways to meet participants. First, under the word event, you will see chat, polls, and people. If you click on people, you can see every single person who has signed up for the event. In order to get in touch with somebody, just click on their name, and then you can invite them to a private video call, schedule a meeting with them and several other colleagues, or send them a private message. The second way to meet people one-on-one -on -one is to click on networking on the left-hand side of your screen. This will take you into a randomized networking, and you will be connected with someone completely at random if you click the blue button that says join here. This is excellent. In few seconds, repeat how to reach Interprefy, please. And then I will leave you alone and will be uh, time to start the real ceremony. For sure. Um, I hope that everybody is able to access Interprefy and that the interpretation is going smoothly you should be able to hear any simultaneous interpretation if you click on plenary on the left-hand side of your screen as I just have. Then underneath plenary, click on translations. Then under translations, you should be able to select your language of choice and interpretation will start immediately. Make sure that you mute the original feed so you don't hear two voices speaking at once and if you would rather access it on a separate device, feel free to download the app Interprefy and input the code that I have pinned in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all who just connected. We are in the official opening ceremony. Uh, if you could um, stop sharing your screen, we are ready for the op official opening. I pass the floor to the chair of the ceremony, uh, Madame Eileen Cohen, who is the acting director of the United Nations Mine Action Service. Eileen, please, you have the floor. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to open the 24th International Meeting of Mine Action National Directors and UN Advisors this year. Our theme is Perseverance, Progress, and Partnership. Of course, I hoped to greet you and to meet you all in person in Bonn. 
But the virtual format that uh, Bruno and Kayla just introduced will allow a lot of colleagues who might otherwise have been unable to travel to take part. The meeting is supported and hosted by Germany, a long-standing and very generous partner to the mine action sector. I know that all of you have experienced Germany's support and commitment to mine action in many ways, including in the various treaty processes as a generous donor to the United Nations, to NGO, NGOs, and as the chair of the uh, Mine Action Support Group. So on behalf of all of us, um, thank you very much to the government of Germany. And with that, it's my great pleasure to introduce the Minister of State of the Federal Republic of Germany, His Excellency Niels Annen, to deliver opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to welcome you at the 24th International Meeting of Mine Action National Directors and United Nations Advisors. Together with Under Secretary General Jean Pierre Lacroix, UNMAS Acting Director Elaine Cohn, and Luz Dari Landa Suri, President of the Association of Survivors of Antipersonal Mines of Narinius Pacific Coast. For Germany, it is an honor to co host this important annual event together with UNMAS. And of course, we would have preferred for this conference to take place in person in Bonn, where the United Nations are located in Germany. But as you all know, the current COVID-19 circumstances do not allow for an actual meeting. So ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, we are happy, however, that with that virtual conference, we can reach more people to join and to contribute to inspiring discussions. Through the platform, we wish to enable panel discussions, site events and bilateral talks, just like last year in Geneva. And I'm sure that these three days will be fruitful and that you can talk about the various topics which are on the agenda. The motto of the conference is Preservance Partnership Progress. So let me emphasize on some of the important agenda items from a German point of view. It is extremely important to sustain the course of mine action in times where COVID-19 pandemic affects especially funding. So where appropriate stakeholders need to consider novel approaches to mine action allow for increasing effectiveness and efficiency but which many also show opportunities to bring conflict-affected people together. Ladies and gentlemen, reflecting on localization can show us essential methods for national capacity building and ownership. There is a need to discuss inclusion and equity in mine action, where knowledge and capacity must be distributed equally and where people must not be discriminated because of their ethnicity and gender. And last, Site events on issues like mine action and environmental impact, approaches to tackle IEDs, or the identification and inclusion of beneficiaries will stimulate the debate and could lead to progress in different areas of explosive ordnance disposal. Germany's commitment for humanitarian mine action dates back to the year 1992. Since then, we have supported affected countries together with our international partners, some of which are represented here. We ourselves have had a long history with landmine contamination and more broadly with explosive remnants of war. Especially after two world wars, the division of our country until 1990, there was much need for not only funding mine action internationally, but also clearance of what is essentially our own country. In 1995, after extensive financial investments and much work, Germany was successfully declared to be a landmine-free country. Today, Germany is still conducting cluster munitions clearance in the former Soviet military training area in Wittstock. The conditions for clearance are difficult. The area is now overgrown with dense forest. There are many explosive remnants of warlike cluster munition, anti-tank mines, missiles and others. Meanwhile, our D-miners need to ensure a very detailed documentation, meteorological conditions, forest fires and environmental concerns, 
also need to be taken into consideration while clearing the area. We are therefore aware of the manifold challenges which mine affected countries face, a lot of them on a much larger scale. Ladies and gentlemen, national ownership is as important as international cooperation and assistance in combating these threats which oftentimes lie below the surface and affect the lives of the most vulnerable people. When affected by explosive remnants, activities like farming and driving, playing and walking can quickly become very dangerous. These seemingly basic activities pose a real threat today in countries like Afghanistan, and Colombia, Iraq, Syria or South Sudan, to just name some places. To deliver humanitarian assistance, to achieve stability and to take up economic activities, survey and clearance of explosive ordnance is crucial. The entire community which has come together today will discuss how to tackle these challenges in the future. We all strive for a world free of landmines and other explosive remnants of war. Therefore, we need to sustain international support and assistance in terms of funding and in terms of political support, also outlined by the Oslo and Draft Lausanne Action Plans of Landmine and Cluster Munition Conventions. The donor community must remain engaged as well as affected countries. All of us, ladies and gentlemen, all of us know that landmines and cluster munition affect people in an indiscriminate way. There is no way to know who will be the victim of a mine which has been laid on the ground today, yesterday, 20 years ago, or which will be a place tomorrow. It may be children playing or going to school, mothers, fathers, persons with disability, persons providing for their family, or elderly people who need to cross dangerous areas to ensure their livelihoods, and many more. This is one of the main reasons why we committed to never use this cruel and inherently indiscriminate weapons and appeal on all states to refrain from using them under any circumstances. Successful mine action then allows societies to finally recover from the scars of conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, it is terrible to see that some actors do not cease to use prodigious weapons to threaten civilians and missions as it happens today in Afghanistan, Mali or Yemen. States as well as non-state armed actors must stop their use of landmines, cluster munition and improvised explosive devices. We commend everyone who acceded to the Ottawa and Oslo Conventions and call on everyone who has not done so to take the appropriate measures and to accede to them. We call particularly on armed groups to not threaten civilians and ensure the safety and security of all human beings. We encourage all parties to end development, production, delivery and use of landmines, as well as to destroy existing stockpiles. Let me be clear, Germany remains committed to mine action. Germany supported projects and programs with nearly 50 million euros in 2020. This totals to an amount of 450 million euros since 1992. We will continue to fund and to assist by supporting coordination, survey and clearance, risk education, victim assistance and advocacy. And we firmly work for achieving a world free of landmines. We will continue supporting victim assistance because even a world free of explosive remnants of war does not mean that there won't be victims anymore. Through common efforts, together with others, and in a truly multilateral spirit, we must join our efforts, coordinate and cooperate, discuss possible steps to take and deliver our best work. The United Nations, civil society, organizations and states come together today to join forces and further exchange on latest developments and the way ahead. Our objective is to increase human security deliver humanitarian assistance where access is impeded and support victims to enhance economic development, to plan for further economic activities and to build trust. We must all work together, states, organizations and individuals,
to raise awareness, to work effectively and efficiently, to find novel approaches to tackle the challenge and to make sure that affected persons are included in an equitable way. Now, I am happy to hand the floor back to Acting Director Eileen Cohn and I wish all the participants a very successful conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Hanen. I would like to turn now to Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the UN Undersecretary General for Peace Operations and Chair of the UN Interagency Coordination Group for Mine Action. He's going to deliver a short statement on behalf of the UN. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to open this year's meeting of Mine Action National Directors and UN Advisors. I thank Germany, our host and a steadfast supporter of Mine Action globally, and the United Nations Mine Action Service, UNMAS, for organizing this meeting. National Mine Action stakeholders play a central role in safeguarding their countries and communities against the dangers of landmines, explosive remnants of war, and improvised explosive devices. Meaningful progress continues to be achieved with the support of the United Nations and civil society actors. This meeting presents a valuable opportunity to take stock of good practices, identify areas of mutual collaboration, and renew commitments towards our collective objective. The theme of this year's meeting, Perseverance, Partnership, Progress, plainly describes what I have continued to witness of the mine action community, including during the COVID-19 pandemic. In the face of today's unprecedented challenges, it is critical that we continue to maximize opportunities and invest in capacities that respond to existing and evolving forms of explosive threats. These threats demand a comprehensive solution. Local actors and community engagement are essential in this regard. Let me wish you all fruitful discussions during today's meeting. Thank you on behalf of the United Nations for your continued commitment to this important cause. Thank you everyone for, for your attention to the, the two opening speakers. Of course, we all know that we're meeting in an unprecedented year. Responding to mines, ERW, and IEDs is difficult in the best of times, but despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, the illness, the lockdowns, the quarantines, the travel restrictions, we know that our sector persevered. Perseverance also led 32 state parties to the Anti-Personnel Mine Ban Convention to declare themselves free of known AP mine contamination. We didn't only persevere, however, we also made progress. Data collected in countries and territories with a UN presence indicates a 35% decrease in casualties caused by explosive ordnance in 2020 when compared with 2019. With UN support and a total of um, a total of 165 million square meters of land were made safe, the equivalent, I'm told, of 23,000 football pitches. Despite restrictions due to COVID, more than three and a half million people received explosive ordnance risk education. And when in-person engagement was impossible, which was often the case, alternative solutions were crafted using social media, radio, speakers mounted on vehicles, billboards. And of course, we often worked with WHO and national authorities to integrate COVID awareness messages. Our data in 2020 also demonstrates progress in national support to victims, the de development of national mine action strategies and capacity development of national authorities and civil society. The progress that's reflected in UN data was achieved through a collective effort that involved donors who stuck by their mine action commitments and contributed over $200 million to UN mine action in the past year civil society partners who continue to reach communities in need despite heightened risks, and national mine action directors and government officials who continued to allocate time and resources to the mine action sector in spite of many competing national priorities. Partnerships are clearly the backbone of this sector and the key to our collective success. And we have to sustain these efforts and sustain these partnerships because millions of people continue to live, work, 
and try to move about in contaminated areas. We have to ensure that the drop in casualties that we saw in this strange and unprecedented year um, signals actually a downward trend and not an anomaly. Improvised explosive device makers will continue to evolve their methods, spreading fear and inhibiting the lives and work of peacekeepers, humanitarians, civilians alike. And it remains to be seen what the pandemic effect will be on financial and policy commitments to mine action. We're also trying to work in an environment of broader trends, protected, protracted conflicts, uh, that in, uh, increasingly devastating effects of climate change, all of these uh, larger elements will necessarily impact how we implement our work going forward. In that context, perseverance, innovation, cooperation are key tools to rise to these challenges. And we've carefully crafted an agenda that will be precisely discussing these issues in the coming days. So let me turn to um, our agenda and review a few elements of it with a lot of gratitude to the panelists who've been giving a lot of time and thought to how they're going to uh, raise and elaborate on these issues that we're going to be discussing. I'm very grateful to, to all of them and to all of you who have helped to craft side events that complement the agenda. Um, <clears throat> Today, we're going to hear remarks on safeguarding financial support for mine action, clearly a topic relevant to all of us given the recent downward trend in funding. The panelists are going to inspire, inspire us to explore new funding mechanisms and share lessons on optimizing existing resources. The plenary on novel approaches will remind us that not all innovation is technological. Sometimes the key to improvement is a new approach. On Wednesday, we'll start with a panel on community engagement, a crucial aspect of delivering ethical and needs-based mine action services. After that session, we're going to turn our attention to localization, and I'm pleased that so many local non-governmental organizations are going to share their experiences. On Thursday, we'll discuss the extent to which mine action capacity has become embedded in broader security sectors in mine affected countries, and how sustainable this capacity may be. And in our final session, we're going to take the first steps in a sensitive dialogue on diversity and inclusion and racial equity, topics that we should all care deeply about because inequities remain widespread. Let's openly confront the issues that preserve biased structures. It's a very exciting agenda, and I want to thank my UNMESC colleagues and those of the Interagency Coordination Group and the Geneva Center for the really hard work that's gone on in recent months to bring this together. We're all part of a sector that seeks to protect people who daily face the threat of explosive ordnance and enable them to live their lives safely. We know that we don't always succeed at preventing harm. And so today our keynote speaker, Ms. Luz Dardi Landasuri, joins us from Colombia with a story of strength, tenacity, and perseverance in the aftermath of injuries suffered directly by herself and her daughter. Ms. Dardi Landasuri, thank you for joining us today and let me give you the floor. In primer lugar, me gustaría dirigir un saludo a todos los presentes, en particular a las personas que intervinieron primero que yo, al señor representante de la República de Alemania, y a los compañeros representantes de las Naciones Unidas. Es para mí un honor compartir este espacio con ustedes. Los saludo desde Colombia, que es un país suramericano, vive en el departamento de Nariño, en un bello municipio de la costa nariñense llamado Tumaco. Les agradezco la oportunidad de dirigirme a la a distinguida audiencia en este evento, que por ser virtu virtual me permite llegar a muchas partes y así poder escucharlo y que me escuchen. Agradezco que me permitan estar en este espacio para contar mi historia. Me siento feliz de hablar porque ustedes son personas que están pensando y analizando la acción contra minas. Y cuando conozcan mi historia pueden tener mejores ideas para lo que, me, para lo que hacen cambie la vida de sobrevivientes que como yo los hay en el mundo entero y que han tenido un impacto por estos artefactos explosivos. 
Ustedes están allí trabajando por las personas que han sufrido un accidente, ayudándolas para que no se queden en el estado de compasión por ellos mismos, sino que por el contrario, dejen la autocompasión y se empoderen y salgan avante en sus nuevos proyectos de vida. Es lo que estoy tratando de hacer con mi vida y por eso les quiero compartir mi historia. Ahora les compartiré mi historia. Mi nombre es Luz Dari Landazuri, soy sobreviviente de mina antipersonal. Mi accidente fue el 18 de octubre del 2012. En ese año mi municipio tenía problemas de orden público, ya que los grupos armados estaban peleando por el control del territorio. Eran aproximadamente las 12 m cuando regresaba a mi pueblo con mi hija Ariana, que tenía en ese entonces siete meses de nacida. Transitábamos por el camino seguro de mi comunidad, cuando una explosión cambió mi vida. Tuve múltiples fracturas y pérdida total de tendón de Aquiles, de mi pierna izquierda. En ese momento mi dolor no importaba, solo pensaba en mi bebé, que estaba cubierta de sangre, me invadía el dolor al pensar que la perdería y la angustia de no poder hacer nada por ella me embargó, ya que no podía moverme del lugar donde estaba. Pasaron unas cuatro horas para que la ambulancia llegara por nosotras para ser atendida en el hospital de segundo nivel de mi municipio, donde recibimos la atención de urgencia y nos remitieron al día siguiente a la ciudad de Pasto, donde el pronóstico fue amputación de mi pierna izquierda. Debido a las heridas, mientras mi hija era hospitalizada en el hospital infantil y llevaba cirugía, ya que debían quitarle las esquilas de su cuerpo y de uno de sus ojos, el cual tenía los temía los médicos que podía perder, ya que una esquila había empatado en él. Gracias a Dios, no perdió la vista. Tuve que permanecer mucho tiempo hospitalizada, ya que después de una junta médica decidieron realizar una cirugía de alta complejidad la que consistía en colocarme un tendón que se trajo de Estados Unidos de América. Para mí fue doloroso saber que en el banco de tejidos de tendones de Bogotá no lo había y tenía que ser traído de otro país y que cada día que tardaba en llegar aumentaba la po posibilidad de que me amputaran la pierna. Saber eso y no ver a mi hija deterioraba cada día mi salud. Una mañana le recibí la gran noticia que mi hija Luz Ariana estaba bien y que sería dada de alta y regresaría al pueblo. Al cuidado de mi hermana, ya que mi esposa seguía acompañándome en el hospital. Inmediatamente después de comuni me comunicaron la llegada del tendón, me tranquilicé al pensar que no volvería a escuchar al médico decir, mejor ser amputar. Después de andar en silla de ruedas por casi tres meses, empieza una dura rehabilitación. We may have lost uh, Luz right in the middle of a very emotional part of the story. I hope we can get her back. Is she so back? That would she, be fantastic. She is back and the okay. connection has been established, so we will Excellent. go back. Thank you so Brilliant. much. Thank you, Bruno. Sí. Después de andar en silla de ruedas por casi tres meses, empieza una dura rehabilitación. Tenía que aprender a caminar. Atrás quedó aquella mujer que le gustaba bailar, saltar y utilizar ropa corta. No lograba aceptar los cambios que había tenido en mi cuerpo debido al accidente. Muchas personas me miraban extraño y murmuraban debido a mi nueva apariencia. Emocionalmente estaba mal, no era la vida que quería para mí. Después me di cuenta que no era la, la única que estaba pas, pasando por ese hecho traumático. Me encontré con personas y organizaciones que me ayudaron a mí y mis hijos que fueron mi, mi motor fundamental para convertirme en la mujer que soy en estos momentos. Empiezo a trabajar en la acción contra minas debido a unas organizaciones que estaban en mi territorio y hablaban de prevención. A mí me gusta hablar y al saber que, estaba, que se trata de enseñar a las comunidades cómo cuidarse frente a estos artefactos y dejar comportamientos seguros a niños, niñas, adolescentes y a comunidad en general, me di cuenta que yo podía ayudar a que otras personas no les pase lo que me pasó a mí. 
aprendí a estar frente a un público, a manejar los juegos y descubrí que me gustaba. Aprendí a estar frente, me, gust, me gusta hacerlo y que las comunidades me aceptan con mayor facilidad cuando se dan cuenta que era una sobreviviente. Me aceptan con mayor facilidad. Aprendí que mi voz no era mi voz, sino la voz de cada uno de mis compañeros. De esa forma nace la Asociación de Sobrevivientes de Mina de la Costa Pacífica Nariñense. Tenemos muchos retos, pero con el empeoramiento y los deseos de brindarles a nuestra familia y a nuestras comunidades un futuro mejor, sé que con el apoyo de la Acción Contra Minas y algunas organizaciones como UNICEF y la campaña colombiana Contra Minas, seguiremos luchando para los derechos de los oyentes sean restablecidos y cumplidos. A la Acción Contra Minas podría mejorar su apoyo a los oyentes de minas antipersonal y incorporando el tema de género y derechos, los procesos de proyectos productivos, salud, educación, las cuales están en nuestro territorio. La Acción Contra Minas les quiero decir que no está sola, que hay organizaciones las cuales están en nuestros territorios y que llegan a esos lugar, lugares donde muchos dicen no poder llegar por su difícil acceso. Ellas apoyan a las víctimas de mina antipersonal, munición sin explosionar y trampas explosivas. Apoyan a los niños, niñas, jóvenes, adolescentes y a las comunidades en general, incluyendo a los inmigrantes venezolanos, dejando esos comportamientos seguros frente a estos artefactos que cada día cobra más vidas en mi municipio y en mi departamento y en mi pacífico colombiano. Entonces, mi recomendación es que sigan con esa mirada pues en Colombia y que en esos territorios donde cada día estos artefactos están causando daño indiscriminadamente. Sigamos trabajando conjuntamente con UNICEF y la campaña colombiana contra minas, que son una de las muchas organizaciones que la apuestan y llegan a esos lugares inaccesibles, a brindar ese acompañamiento a las víctimas, a formar personas de la comunidad para que ellas enseñen esos comportamientos seguros frente a estos artefactos que cada día cobran más víctimas mortales en mi Pacífico Sur colombiano. Este evento estará centrado en hablar sobre la perseverancia, la asociatividad y el progreso. Espero de todo corazón que mi historia pueda inspirar a las personas que trabajan en la acción contra minas alrededor del mundo, pues creo que finalmente es posible vivir en un mundo libre de minas. Esto lo, lograr, lo lograremos perseverando, aun cuando se presenten tantos obstáculos. También se logrará trabajando en equipos, acercándonos a, a, a los sobrevivientes, organizaciones de la sociedad civil y gobiernos, solo fortaleciendo nuestras capacidades individuales y colectivas y no dejando a nadie atrás lograremos el progreso. Muchas gracias. Y no se olviden que los sobrevivientes de mina antipersonal necesitan de ustedes. Gracias, Luz, Darilanda Suri, por uh, compartir tu, su historia tan poderosa y emotiva. You are a real inspiration to us, your leadership and the way in which you've Uh, taken on this role uh, after this uh, horrible accident is uh, truly inspiring. Thank you very, very much. And I'd like to turn now to the um, minute of silence that um, we'd like to invite you to, to respect in honor of the victims of Mines ERW and ID, and of course the, the friends and colleagues that we've lost in the effort to to save the lives of others. So we'll, we'll take a minute.
Thank you very much. Allow me just to share some final administrative details before um, we come close to the, the wrap up of this opening session. All of the conference information, including background notes and the agenda are online. Um, I'm sure that in the chat we can post the link also on the event platform as was demonstrated earlier. Representatives of member states who would like to deliver statements on behalf of their governments are invited to email the statements uh, to unmasgeneva at un.org. And again, that'll be posted in the chat. For the national directors, I'd like to um, remind you that you've received invitations to two separate closed door side meetings, both tomorrow, Wednesday, and again on Thursday. Those take place before the main sessions get started. Thank you if you've responded to that invitation and especially if you've provided some written inputs, which were much welcomed. Um, I encourage all of the other uh, national directors to please attend and we will resend those invitations today just so that you have them and you've got the login link at your fingertips and we will um, see you tomorrow and Thursday at those meetings. So with that, I look forward to everyone's active engagement and now I'm gonna close this opening ceremony by presenting Mr. Daniel Craig, the UN Global Advocate for the Elimination of Mines and Explosive Hazards. Thank you very much. Welcome to the 24th International Meeting of Mine Action, National Directors and United Nations Advisors. Bringing assistance to survivors of explosive hazards in countries around the world remains a priority and a legacy of the Anti-Personnel Mine Ban Convention a legacy we can all be very proud of. I continue to support the United Nations effort to make this a mine-free world, and I support the Safe Ground campaign. It continues to turn some of the most dangerous spaces in the world into a source of hope and community, and deserves our support in both actions and words. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Director Alin Cohn. The session, the official opening ceremony is over. Now I take my role of one of the announcers, master of ceremonies of the larger uh, NDM UN to tell you what will happen after this moment that the openers, opening ceremony is uh, finished. So I think uh, you should be ready in about 10 minutes exactly uh, we will have the first plenary session on uh, staying the course, mine action, uh, financing in times of scarcity. So now we'll take a few minutes uh, to show you a little bit more of this uh, platform hop-in uh, because we have some time. Those who are busy, this is a good time to take an unofficial break keep the plenary session online, let it go, mute yourself. You can go away from your laptop, phone or computer, but let's, uh, in the meantime, for those who need help, let's carry on. One key feature, perhaps uh, if Caitlin can stand by for a bit later when I want to show the agenda, the full version, the short version and full version, but before that, uh, Kayla, uh, would you be okay to show yourself again? Uh, there's one feature uh, in this hop-in platform, like we do in real, like we used to do in the Palais des Nations for the MDM meetings. There are booths where participants, companies, NGOs working in the mine action uh, sector can show some of their products. Can you show us from the hop-in how we can access that or even do a booth in the next three days, please. For sure. Thank you, Bruno. I will share my screen once again. In order to find the expo, which it would be great if everyone could browse in their free time, go to the left hand side of your screen and at the very bottom, you will see expo. Click on expo and you will see the wonderful booths that many organizations have prepared for the NDM. Click on one of those booths 
and you are welcome to watch all the videos, scroll through the material, contact any of these organizations or ask them questions in the chat. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you. Uh, I'm a bit curious. Can you go back to the main page? If you can uh, mute yourself momentarily. I will ask you to unmute as you go down. Perhaps go down the list. Uh, we see a few things. These are booths, so organizations, NGOs in particular, and I will do a, a little uh, appeal to women's organization in countries far apart from where I am. Please contact us to show and tell what you are doing in um, my nation. Let's go, and you can comment on a few of those if you can, Kayla or show a little bit. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Bruno. So currently we have submissions from several UN organizations and several branches of the UN Mine Action Service, including from Unmass Colombia, Unmass Somalia, Unmass Territory of Western Sahara, and Unmass it, it, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would love to not hear Unmass. Are there others? Are there uh, yeah, of can course. you highlight non-UNMAS, please? Of course. We have contributions from several NGOs, um, thanks to GICHD, ICRC, um, and a booth on the standardizing beneficiary definitions in humanitarian mine action and landmine free 2025, in addition to MAG and the MAAOR. And finally, we have an interesting exhibit from the International Mine Action Day uh, from Comnat Alpac um, from the Central African Republic. So I really encourage everyone to check out these booths. A lot of hard work has gone into them on the part of the organizers. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you could in the chat and while you mute yourself, uh, also at the email of unmasgeneva at un.org, in addition to your personal email, uh, to contact us if you need uh, to do that. Very briefly, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kayla. Very briefly, if Caitlin is somewhere online, can, can we have a quick chat, please? Absolutely. Hello, Bruno. Hi, your name is Screen Sharer, but you are Caitlin. Uh, very nice. Um, uh, perhaps uh, show me the agenda, the short version, please. And we go over this quickly as we prepare for the next session in about three to four minutes will be plenary one. You're muted, Caitlin, if you could unmute. Absolutely. Let me bring up the agenda for you, Bruno. So here we have the short agenda, which you can find on the reception page. And it is translated in all six UN official languages with links to each on the reception page. Excellent. So the snapshot, we are together. Uh, Geneva time, today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and 27th of May, Thursday from 2 p.m. Geneva time, 8 a.m. New York, I think, to 6.30 p.m. Geneva time. Three days, you see a few nice plenaries. Of course, my eyes are not good enough to see this, but the next plenary, I will read what it is. And I think, if you don't mind, let's go to the website when we enter the main website. Can you show us where to get the detail and the detail agenda, which details everything that will happen? So many people are connected right now. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. So as I mentioned, this is the reception page here on Hopin. So I'm here on reception. And if you're looking for the full program, or as I mentioned, any of the short agendas in any of the six UN official languages, they're all in this block here under description. So for example, the full program is going to be here. We can click and see the full program here. The full program lists everything that's going on in the next few days. You have descriptions, including the speakers that are going to be joining for plenary sessions, as well as side events. So we can look through this. Excellent. Can you zoom in a little bit? Let's talk only about Certainly. today. 
Um, so today the opening ceremony is over, which is okay. Soon we will have uh, first plenary session one, which is in about two minutes, staying the course, mine action financing in times of scarcity, after which we will have a half hour break, uh, 30 minutes, local time Geneva, 4 to 4.30, to do whatever, visit expos, do networking, uh, talk to each other, or take coffee breaks, or where, which time zone you are. And the last, uh, the session of 4.30 to 5.30, there will be three concurrent events, side events. We'll explain to you how to get there. One on standardizing um, beneficiary, beneficiary definitions, I'm sorry. One on environmental assessment and one on mental health and psychosocial support. Then at 5.30 to 6.30 to uh, finish the day, there will be uh, the last session of the day on no novel approaches in mine action, chaired by His Excellency Mr. Robert Habriese, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the conference on disarmament Geneva. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, if we can um, pull out all screens. We are about to go to session uh, plenary one. And for you to know there's a new plenary each time, if you're making coffee or doing whatever, there will be that sound of that video with drums noise to get your attention. So you need to listen to that and we'll go shortly to plenary one. Thank you very much.